Hi, my name's John Pitney. I'm standing on the back corner on the back patio of our Net Zero Energy House in McMinnville, Oregon. When we set out to build this house, our goal was to build a very energy efficient home and have solar panels on the roof to generate enough electricity to run the house and charge our electric car. When we thought about it, net zero energy house, what about a net zero water house? So we found a rain water catchment contractor, Oregon Rain Harvesting, and they helped us install this system that takes rain off of our metal roof, comes down through a micro mesh screen on top of the gutters, runs down the downspouts to an underground line, which takes it to these three 3,000 gallon storage tanks behind me. Then a pump in the garage pulls the water from the tanks, runs them through a polypropylene filter, a charcoal filter, and ultraviolet, ultraviolet light, and into the house where we use it for all uses, cooking, showering, flushing, and also for the garden. When it's in the rainy season, there's overflow from the tanks. So we have a line that goes to the street, to the storm drain, but before it gets there, it takes a detour and goes into a uh, bioswale we created uh, that's all planted with native Oregon prairie plants, and most of it stays there and never gets to the storm drain. So you might be asking, why catch the rain at all? Well, besides that it's really fun taking showers in the rain, there are a couple of really good reasons. With the climate chaos that's going on now, and the increasing intensity of storm events, many towns and municipalities, uh, their storm drain systems are becoming overwhelmed. So, some of them are starting actually pilot programs to have rain catchment in the neighborhoods to see if they can mitigate some of that runoff. Another reason is, for instance, in rainy western Oregon here, we've got d wells all around us going dry. Three. Do you know how much rain comes off of a roof in rainy western Oregon in a year? Well, there's a, a way to calculate that. They say that 0.6 gallons comes from every square foot of roof when it rains one inch. So we have a house that's roughly uh, 1,800 square feet of area, of roof area. So whenever it rains one inch, 1,800 times 0.6, 1,080 gallons comes off the roof. Well, in McMinnville here, we have annual precipitation of 39 inches a year. So doing the math, over 42,000 gallons will come off of our roof in a year's time. So we're sitting up on top of the three tanks right now. Um, they're completely full, all three of them. They're hooked up in a series and um, the, top, the tops of the tank are all lower than the lowest hanging gutter on the house. So they're just filled by gravity and they all fill up at the same time and empty at the same time. You may be wondering how we uh, keep track of how much is in the tanks. We actually put a rubber ducky in each one of the tanks and, uh, and they float in there for the duration. Uh, and when they get down to the bottom, when it gets too low, they make a racket and we, we know the tanks are empty. I hope you enjoyed the rubber ducky joke. Anyway, I was just about to uh, replace the gauge which sits on the center tank. And uh, it's just, uh, you can see the meter here it has a float on it. So when, it's, uh, when the tanks are full and it's floating on top, you see the position, full position there. And as the float goes down, you can see that the needle goes around and around and around and as it gets more empty 
clear to the bottom and we know that it's full. Of course, as it fills up, the needle goes back around again and we eventually get them full. 9,000 gallons of water. All right, so let's uh, start from the beginning. We're up here on the roof. The car goes by. The rain comes off the roof. It's a metal roof. And then it comes to the uh, screen over the top of the gutter. The product is called Gutter Glove. It's a stainless steel micromesh screen. The holes are 550 microns. Uh, they come in four foot sections for really in uh, easy installation and a 40 year warranty. Uh, you can see uh, if you look close that uh, they're very well built. Uh, underneath the screen is a very heavy uh, aluminum structure. So it's in here for the duration. This is the only filtering that happens to the water from the roof till it gets to the storage tanks. So after the water comes off of the roof and goes through the gutter gloves screen, it of course comes down the downspouts and here is where we have the other provision uh, for making the water as clean as possible. It's called a first flush system. And all it is is when the water comes off the roof, you can see it comes down this pipe first. And this pipe comes down to a dead end. There's a place a valve for the water in this pipe then can slowly leak onto the ground. Because uh, after, before, when it hasn't rained for a while, and the roof has a lot of bird droppings and dust and everything that's collected up there, then the first water comes down this pipe first. And when that pipe's full, then it goes over the top and onto the tanks, the first flush system. Three. And now here we are in the corner of the garage. Once the water comes off of the metal roof, goes through the gutter glove, some of it goes through the first flush system to take out the big chunks, then it goes underground to the tanks. And in the garage, we have a pump. The rainwater comes in here from outside. It goes through this uh, three-quarter horsepower pump, which pre pre pressurizes the system to 60 pounds, and then up to get filtered. Goes through two filters. The purification system consists of this polypropylene filter, this charcoal coal filter, the, this filter um, takes out remaining smaller residue. The charcoal filter basically is to take out flavors and odors. And then uh, the ultraviolet light, which kills any pathogens that may be left in the water at that point. Pressure tank here and into the house. So most of the ongoing management of this system happens right here in the garage. The polypropylene filters filter needs to be changed every three months. The charcoal filter gets changed twice a year. And routinely, we usually have the guy from Oregon Rainwater Harvesting, Michael Martins, come out and do an annual uh, go through of the whole system. And uh, while he does that, he changes the UV bulb. So it gets changed just annually. Um, I was uh, changing filters, or changed the charcoal filter this morning. You can see that uh, it's, uh, it's full of some stuff. I mean, it's darker than the new one would be. Um, it's fairly, fairly simple. It's just uh, 
loosening this rib here, the old filter. You see the poly, polypropylene filter has uh, quite a bit of refuse in it after three months. If you forget and don't change it sometimes for a month or so uh, like that, they can uh, start looking pretty grody. But uh, we'll uh, drop a new one in. Sets up in here. Put the ring up. Once it gets started, it's pretty easy. You tighten it down. Tighten it all the way up snug. Turn the water back on. We didn't have to turn the pump on at all. We just flipped the valve. Let it run slowly until the filter gets filled up. Let some of the air out of the top. Let it dry so we can see if it's sneaking. And that's pretty much it. We do the same thing with the charcoal filter. And uh, we're good for another three months. So we've taken hundreds of people through our house. And one of the things we hear most often when we come to the rain catchment system is people will say, well, this is not legal in Oregon. And I think, uh, I think they get that from a case that happened in Southern Oregon many years ago where a guy on his land dug three reservoirs and was catching groundwater as it came down and uh, stopping it before it got to his neighbors. Well, when rain comes down, when it hits the ground, it's public property. And he was totally breaking the law in, in so many ways. But that's not the same as the rainwater here. So, you know, there are state regulations that the state plumber puts in place and those codes are are changing so that more and more of us could do this if we want to. One of the things that's required, of course, is that we're, we're attached to city water. When the rainwater runs out, I'm typically, uh, the rain year starts in October, the tanks fill up. Um, last year, it basically quit raining the 1st of April, and uh, our rainwater ran out about the 1st of July. So what that means is, uh, and we've had this for a few years, uh, we're getting nine months of all of our water use from rainwater. And then we switch back to city water, which is easy as opening this, flipping that valve open, and flipping this valve closed. We were on rainwater, now we're on city water. To go back to rainwater, of course, I'm going to close that valve and open this one. Easy as that. So catching rainwater on our property is also about enhancing beauty in the neighborhood. What we did when we created the system was we created this long, narrow bioswale. So any overflow during the rainy season comes into here before it goes to the street. And we've rarely seen water get as far as the street. We have it planted with a number of 
native Oregon wetland prairie plants. Oregon sunshine is here, this yellow plant. Here's a spirea, checker mallow. It's just a beautiful place. We have a couple of kinds of camas. We have a, a nodding onion. The first thing that comes awake in the spring is the uh, Oregon, what is that? Oregon iris, sorry. Behind us, the on the other side, the mock orange is blooming. But the overflow was all caught in the bioswale. It's connected to the drain system, an underground pipe that comes through here. And if it were ever to get to the street, it had come out through this bubbler and bubble over into the street and go to the storm grounds. But that hardly ever happens. So, that's our rainwater catchment system and water purification system. If you got any questions about that, you could always reach us. This wouldn't have happened without the people, especially Michael Martins, at Oregon Rain Harvesting, a great resource for rain catchment in Oregon. So, that's it. Thanks for being here.